The general managers, they never say it on the record. They always have somebody else say it for them. I, I wanted to get to this, um, really. There's no such thing as a bad draft. So stop oh, saying yeah. it. Yeah. It's not a bad draft. Even yeah. if the draft doesn't have the star power or the quarterback power that these general managers expected, overall, yes, this there's big, talent. big picture, there's talent. including excitement, interest. You got to find it. There's no such thing as a bad draft. But I was going to say to you, when you were talking, I thought it was fascinating when you and Charles were going back and forth and you talked about Mario Williams and having everybody, you know how it is as a journalist, when you're so far out front. You look lost. And nobody's around I want, you. I want that on my tombstone. And, and, right. He was so far ahead till he looked yeah. lost. You want, you want, <laughs> you want something to hold on to. You want that anchor. Give me something to stabilize yeah. me because yeah. nobody is saying what I know to be true. Right. But I think this is a good lesson, not just for journalism, but just in life. There are certain people that you'll accept truth from. Sure. There are certain people that you'll you'll accept. Hey, I know this is happening. Like, certain people tell you, stick to your guns, and they're still wrong. Sure. So this this is an exercise, I imagine, as an insider, yeah. as a draft insider, where you say, he told me to stick to my guns. I trust this source. Yes. And now that the source is, now, not, not approval rating. Sources oh, have yeah. approval ratings oh, and, yeah. like, yeah. wins and losses. Yeah. There's some sources who are in that top tier, like, okay, he's never Impeccable. lied to me. Yeah. Never lied to me. Impeccable. Now, sometimes... I can't get them, and that tells me something else. There you go. That tells me that's it. I'm on to something, but he can't. He doesn't want. He or, doesn't want to lie to me. Or you get to the point where the relationship is such where they're like, "Listen, I, I can't. I can't tell you this. I can't. Okay. I can't get into it. Right. Or I tell you, but I, I got to kill you. Or I, 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 right. I'm. Li I'll be lying to you. You know what I mean? I can't confirm or deny. Like it's just you get to a relationship where you just know I'm willing to stake my reputation on this source on this information, and I'll take the bullets. I'll take the criticism, right. you know? I'll tell you, uh, and it's not a football story, but it really goes with that sourcing thing, and it was actually pro basketball. It was Doc Rivers. When the, the summer that they got Kawhi and Paul George, yeah, he said Ty Lue was calling him constantly, and he said it, it very color, colorfully, MF, you up to something because you never this hard to get. Yeah. And you always talking to me. Yeah. So you're up to something. Yeah. I know you're doing something. Yeah. And, and Doc called him. I, I, can't, I can't say anything. Right. They right. hung up. I got it. I can't say anything. I hung up. Yeah. So that's how you sometimes sourcing happens that way. Somebody who has always been there for you, unless they get mad at you. <laughs> Maybe they're not calling you back because they got mad at you for something yeah. you wrote or something or you, you said. Or you burned them. Or you released something yeah. that you weren't supposed to. But let's, let me get back to that larger point about no bad drafts. Not only is this a good draft and a deep draft at certain positions, or so we think, inexact science, yeah. a crapshoot, which is why, like I said off top, Vegas is the perfect place to have this. Teams are playing poker. These prospects are wild cards. The draft is the ultimate crapshoot. Right. Welcome to Las Vegas, right? Right. But – there's also, you know, we, we're focused because we don't know what's going to happen uh, at number one. It's hard to kind of, you know, slot who's going to go after number one, more so than usual since we don't know that the quarterback is going to want to, we don't have, you know, a contract done with the number one pick like they have been in past years. Um, we heard from Jermaine Johnson coming into this segment. There are more than two great edge rushers or three great edge rushers in this class. Right. So – it's not just Walker, Hutchinson, Thibodeau. Jermaine Johnson is going to make a team really happy. Yeah. And I love Jermaine Johnson because he's well-traveled and he's overcome adversity. Poor grades led him to junior college in Lawrence, Kansas, at Independence Community College. Last chance you. He goes to Georgia, doesn't crack the lineup, transfers and dominates in his one year at Florida State. Right. To me, that's not a guy running from a challenge. That's a guy that's able to navigate a career and adapt to different set of circumstances. And 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 he, you know, he can he can ingratiate himself in a different program. So, not to mention, he's got the measurables. He's got the production. So I say that to say, we think the stars are Hutchinson and Walker. We don't know. And you and I, man, like we talked about this the other day. 
we're suckers for good interviews. Oh yeah, Jermaine Johnson was a pleasure Jermaine to join. Johnson to, was uh, great. He was a pleasure to talk I'm to. Still disappointed to he to. didn't he didn't pull that guitar down. Kayvon and start Thibodeau. playing for us. I don't give a damn what they say. I know we're not asking the same questions yeah. as these NFL evaluators are asking, but Kayvon Thibodeau, he just seemed like he was wired the right way. We have not met this young man, but we're about to play some sound from the top cornerback on most people's boards in this draft. If you didn't think he was the real deal based on the tape at Cincinnati, if you didn't think he was the real deal because his name is Sauce, listen to this from Cincinnati Sauce Gardner. I mean, I feel like I could dominate. I could dominate whoever in front of me. You know, I study the game a lot. You know, I prepare for the game a lot, which is why I'm in the position that I am now. You know what I'm saying? I don't even feel like nobody's close to me when it comes to the cornerback. You know, I'm always available. You know, I'm always playing. You don't got to worry about none of that extra stuff, you know. I'm a strong guy. I just keep going. You know, I done worked out with other guys, like, who've been in the talk of being CB1 and this and that, but they work, that, work at the isn't better than mine, you know. Nothing they do better than mine, better than what I do. He said, I feel like I'm the chosen one. Wow. He said, I feel like I'm the best in the draft. Come on. There's no doubt about it. There's no way I could be a bust. That that shouldn't even be an option. All right. I mean, you know, certain yeah. dudes just like, you just know. Like, that's not quite, they're going to have to put me on layaway. You know? Yeah. That's, <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, vintage it's, Deion it's, Sanders. It's got those vibes, too. Yeah. Right? Look, look, this is what, this is the first time we've done this. Covering the draft, they should. As I said, we should have draft in Vegas every year. If we do it next year, I'm going to be more prepared. I'm bringing a chain like that. <laughs> the chain says sauce. My man's got a chain that says sauce. It speaks for itself. Yeah. And it just you gotta you gotta be about it. like it would look ridiculous on me because I wouldn't. I'd be self conscious about it. Yeah. Like, right. is, is it too much? Yeah. <laughs> is it too much? But just for him, he's like okay with the hat. And the chain, yeah. it's like, yeah, and nobody's better than me. Yeah. Nobody's got a better work ethic than I do. I do everything. I'm available, which is a little subtweet, veiled shot at Derek Stingley Jr. Maybe, maybe. Who maybe. hadn't played a lot of football in the last two years. But he's just trying to let you know. I but, love this. But that's, but that's why they get it wrong. You know, and it's a lot of reasons why some kids don't work out. You said okay. there's no bad drafts. We talked about this in the aftermath of the tragic death of Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. There are no busts. We got to stop relegating people to their draft status and say this guy's a bust. There are picks okay. that work out better than others for a number of reasons. Part of it, the circumstances, it's the coaching, it's where they put in position to succeed. But and this is a this is a okay. cliche, but we have to okay. say it. We have to hammer it home. Okay. They can't measure this. That's true. They can't measure this. So you got guys that's not gonna get that's gonna get drafted later in the first round tonight. You got, get, got guys that's gonna get drafted in the second and third round tomorrow night. That guy's going to get drafted on Saturday. You got guys that won't get drafted that will look back at me like, how did we miss it? How did we not see that? Well, how do you measure intangibles? And, and, and it's a good question. Here's another thing. Let me, just, let me just bring this up. There's a cultural element to this that needs to be called out more. When you say a kid doesn't have a good interview, doesn't do a good interview, or... Yeah, who's interviewing them? That, right. Who's asking the question? Right. And so we got to point that out. We know the dynamics of the league. We know the league is mostly young men of color on the field. Mostly. Yeah. And so there's, there are people who are interviewing them mostly. Old are white not, men. Yeah. Older are white not. men. Yeah. And yeah. so you may think that Kayvon Thibodeau, he should be a little more deferential. You think that. Maybe he's arrogant, or maybe you think that football's not important to him oh, well, let's because go there. he doesn't fit in this little prefab uh, box you have that you think there is a, connective a prospect tissue. should be this. There is a through line from Brian Flores' lawsuit to Kayvon Thibodeau's draft process. You and I, we didn't even have to say it because we understood it. We've never said it to each other off camera. We have never said it on camera. You and I both bristled. Unspoken, what's understood need not be spoken. You and I both bristled at the notion that Kayvon Thibodeau didn't interview well. Right. 
because we know that's code. Yeah. Yes. We yes. know we know that 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 somewhere in there. Now and listen, he may have. I'm gonna say it. You gonna laugh when I say it. He may have some shit to him. Okay, <laughs> as they say right. in, in scouting circles. Right. 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 He may. You know. Maybe. Maybe it's. Maybe it's legitimate. But we both. You and I both know that the idea of an arrogant black man. That notion runs throughout every sector of society. Oh, I was going to say. You I, and I deal I with it. I was going to say, don't just People leave it to football. People at home deal with it. Don't leave it to football. We, it's and every, everything. Every corporate, everything. Every, every aspect of American society. This one's for free. This we is rub for, people the hey, wrong way. Hey. If we if we walk in too confident, how about, how about, we how rub about people this? the wrong way. How about way. this, Mike? This is for free. This is Real Talk presented by Capital One. Okay. <laughs> that's for free. Wait, that's, okay. not, that's all Wednesdays, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Give it, give it, yeah, we, yeah, we'll give it to you. That's no yeah. problem, but yes. You understand? So the yeah. idea that somebody who doesn't approach football as his end-all, be-all, as, 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 as the only thing that motivates him in life, somehow that guy isn't passionate about the game? Yeah, and I remember this, and I'll give Come him credit. Now. I'll give him credit. I remember um, – this sounds like a flex. It's not meant to be a flex, but I'll, I'll flex it a little bit. I remember one time being in the Patriots draft room. Yes, I was in the draft room. What a what a moment. Anyway, I was in the Patriots draft room, but this is before the actual draft. So this is during the scouting process. And Scott Pioli was there at the time. And the scouts were talking about, and they have all of the, uh, all of the categories that the Patriots were looking at. Hey, how's this guy? Is he a reps guy? Or does he get it immediately? Uh, mental, learning, character, motor, all these things, all these scouting terms that you and I are familiar with. And they talked about an African-American prospect, and they talked about his intelligence. And Pioli said, wait a minute. Why are you talking about his intelligence? He scored this way here. He was a good student here in high school. He's a good student in college. You're talking about his intelligence. Are you saying that about him because of the way he talks? Yeah. He said, let's not get caught up yeah. in, in connecting how someone's talking. It, 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 sometimes it's the accent. In the Northeast, and it's, it's happened for a lot of people of all races. You know this, Mike, being from the South. People in the Northeast sometimes look at people from the South. Oh, you got a drawl. Well, there's, oh, well, there, and oh. there's also academic intelligence and football intelligence. Right, right. Or, or so, worldly intelligence. So Scott called him out there. Yeah. He said, no, no, I don't not think Not surprised coming from Scott he said, He said, intelligence is not an issue. And he went back. He said, don't look at this kid this way. I'll give you another example of somebody we scouted years ago where he may not have sounded yeah. the way you wanted him to sound, but his intelligence never came into question. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.